to some questions. A colleague of mine uh, in England, uh, Gavin Giovannoni, uh, is a world-renowned and amazing MS uh, neurologist who is very, very forward-thinking. Uh, many of you uh, follow his uh, BART's blog, where he very frequently uh, talks about contemporary articles uh, published in multiple sclerosis. This past Friday, uh, Dr. Giovannoni put out a, uh, a discussion uh, on uh, the European expert opinions about alentuzumab. And he makes a couple astute comments, uh, identifying that the authors were probably not able to say uh, their full unbiased responses, um, and that they were probably limited by multiple factors discussed in his blog. And so he then subsequently says, listen, if I was going to ask questions, real world questions to experts about a drug like alentuzumab, uh, these are the questions I would ask. And he's listed out uh, multiple questions. I'm going to try to answer those questions from my opinion. I'm not providing uh, medical advice. I'm not uh, quoting data. I'm simply sharing uh, from, a, from a guy uh, in central Ohio who has infused a bunch of patients with alentuzumab what my real world experience has been. And so uh, this morning I'm just going to answer the first question. And he writes, should we consider alentuzumab, that's Limtrada, should we consider alentuzumab in patients with MS who've only had one clinical attack? And that's a really provocative question. Now, when we studied this drug, we studied it in two big clinical trials. One were for patients that were treatment naive. They had never been on a drug, but they had diagnosed multiple sclerosis, meaning they had had two attacks or they had had an attack and then adequate MRI evidence to prove that they had MS. There was a second trial where people had at least had breakthrough disease on one drug. Now, if you look at that first trial, the CARAMS-1 trial, this was a population of very young patients and they were very early in their disease process, maybe one step past the people that Dr. Giovannone is discussing. In, in that CARAMS-1 trial, we found that the patients responded quite beautifully. Uh, in fact, I would submit that the earlier that you apply alemtuzumab, the better long-term benefit that I would expect to have. As the MS disease progresses, epitopes spread, and I think it becomes, in some cases, harder to control. Alemtuzumab is unique in that it's an induction therapy. It's really in essence, um, killing off a bunch of adult uh, white blood cells and making them grow back nicer. And we believe, some of us believe, that that rewrites part of the immune response, uh, and that's why we see long-term benefit. So going back to the question, it, it, it makes a lot of sense where you might consider applying a highly, highly effective therapy like alentuzumab after the first event. And that's something that uh, we're not able to do uh, in the United States because of the way the FDA has written a label. Um, it's much to my chagrin. Um, even in England, where Dr. Giovannone writes, um, it's recommended um, for first line, but first line MS. And so we're talking about one step before that after your first attack. If I had a patient who, after their first attack, had multiple significant bad prognostic indicators, I would be very inclined to consider alentuzumab if regulatories were such that I was able to. Now, I'm not talking about your classic patient, but if I paint an archetype for you, uh, an ethnic minority like an African-American who's at increased risk of progression uh, being sped up, a patient who has incomplete recovery from that first attack, and so they have accrued a degree of disability, they now have a limp or they now can't see, um, and when we examine them, their disability scale is actually increased. A patient who presents with multiple symptoms, so maybe their vision and their speaking and their arm, as opposed to one event, a patient who presents with spinal cord involvement, uh, with motor involvement or, or cerebellar, you know, coordination involvement, these are all bad prognostic factors. If the original MRI, the first MRI that we get, has a bunch of white spots, a heavy burden of disease, or if there's a constant con contrast enhancement, these are all uh, pieces of evidence that might suggest that this one individual is at much higher likelihood of going on to develop very significant MS. And you could imagine how wonderful it would be if we could grab that individual after their first attack and shut it down. And I think that there's a potential to do something like that with alentuzumab. Now, have I done this in practice? I have not. I have not been able to. Um, to be frank, I've tried a couple times uh, and I've been stymied by insurance uh, and other barriers. But I still think that it's the right thing to do and it's something to think about. So that's my biased uh, personal opinion with regards to Dr. Giovannone's first question should we consider alentuzumab in patients uh, who've only had one attack. Uh, tune in, I'll, I'll be back uh, soon, and I'll answer a few more of his questions. Thank you very much.